The last type of machine learning is reinforcement learning, where informally you're trying to learn the best action or policy using the data. More formally, the goal of reinforcement learning is to uh, learn a model that can determine how agents should take actions in an environment to maximize the cumulative reward. Um, if that sounds like a you know, mouthful of words, think about you know, a really common example, which is, you know, let's say you're driving to work or you're playing a game. Uh, in the case of driving, you know, you're constantly making decisions about whether you make a left turn, a right turn, do you take the freeway, do you take the side streets? And if you know, you're kind of reading the environment around you and you notice that there's a big traffic backup, in a sense, you're learning a policy about how to navigate the environment in a way that will get you to your destination in the fastest period of time. So that's kind of uh, a key example uh, of what makes reinforcement learning different from other types of machine learning. Here's kind of an, an example that you know, was in the news over the last couple of years, which is uh, an algorithm that was built by the DeepMind team, which is now part of Google, to play uh, this game called Go. Go is considered a very tough game, uh, and it was considered that you know, even if a computer could master the game of chess, that you know, defeating professionals in Go would be out of reach because there are so many possible moves that it's no, it wouldn't be possible to kind of have the algorithm uh, or build an algorithm that could consider every possibility uh, as, it, as it plays uh, in real time. So instead of approaching this as a um, typical supervised learning problem, uh, or by building, you know, uh, or hard coding rules into uh, an algorithm to say, you know, if you see this kind of a board, do this. If you see that kind of a board, do that. What they actually did was something very clever. They had this game, uh, they had this algorithm play against itself. Um, and the algorithm itself was a neural network. And by playing games against itself, it was able, uh, able to actually train and improve and improve and improve. At the start of the learning process, the algorithm didn't know anything about the game of Go. Um, and as it played, it was able to you know, get better and better and eventually even learn to pick who's going to be the winner uh, of games. So you can see how you know, they were training this algorithm for you know, days on end and at uh, on, on day zero, it had a very terrible kind of uh, rating. And about three days into training, it was able to perform fairly well. Uh, and after 21 days of training, it was um, able to beat uh, you know, 60 top professionals and beat a world champion in three out of three games in 2017. So this is the sort of thing that you know, reinforcement learning is very well suited for. It has been applied in health, but in health, one thing that's very challenging is that for you to train a reinforcement learning algorithm, it has to be able to learn from the environment and to change the environment. Meaning, in the previous example, um, by making a move in the game of Go, it actually changes the current environment uh, on that board. In healthcare, you know, I don't think we would be comfortable having an algorithm, you know, make changes to a patient state by giving medications or making medical decisions to be able to learn what the best uh, course of action is. However, using data that's been collected from routine care that's provided to patients, we can make efforts to try to figure out what is the right thing to do uh, for that for any given patient, with the idea being that potentially this could be useful for informing guidelines uh, in care, but also in counseling providers on what might be the best course of action at a given point in time for a patient. So this is a paper by Kamarowski and colleagues uh, that was published in Nature looking at um, 
predicting uh, the right course of action for sepsis. They used uh, the MIMIC-3 data set. They developed their model on 80% of the data. They looked at uh, medication dose, uh, doses, uh, including the dose of blood pressure raising medicines and uh, IV fluids. And they compared them, so they used this to estimate uh, an optimal policy or an optimal course of action for each patient. And then they compared this against what the clinicians actually did to try to figure out in a separate data set which strategy worked better. And what you can see is that um, from panel B, uh, there are a lot of patients on the, in the clinician policy that got very little IV fluids and a very low dose of blood pressure raising medication uh, known as vasopressors, whereas the amount of fluids given was uh, kind of more uh, spread uh, in the policy learned by the reinforcement learning algorithm. And when they looked at their validation set and tried to look at, did the algorithm learn a useful representation uh, or a useful policy, they found that, you know, uh, where zero represents what the uh, machine learning algorithm recommended, you know, any other value less less than that or greater than that uh, for both IV fluids and vasopressor was associated with a higher mortality. So they took that to mean that, you know, following the recommendation of a uh, machine learning algorithm could get you better outcomes than relying on clinicians uh, to make these decisions on their own. Although that finding has not been uh, prospectively you know, evaluated um, in any kind of a clinical trial. So we'll end this video on this slide, which talks about uh, some of the challenges that come across in machine learning, uh, which is that there is a constant uh, confusion in this space because of an overlap of terminology uh, that derives from machine learning versus terminology that derives from statistics. So, for example, when I was talking about unsupervised uh, learning in the world of statistics, you know, that concept is generally known as latent variable modeling. And when I was talking about supervised learning, that is, you know, more generally referred to as predictive modeling um, in the field of statistics. So I put this here not to kind of make you pick sides and say, I want you to choose one versus the other. Rather, I'll actually be using terms from uh, both statistics and machine learning, and I'll try to be very explicit about letting you know which of the terms I'm referring to uh, so that you can become familiar with this space. It's useful to understand both perspectives because a lot of the uh, you know, machine learning literature uh, is looked down upon by statistical leaders in this area because, in part, they're using vocabulary that goes against the vocabulary of statisticians. And on the flip side, you know, machine learning sometimes is reinventing terminology for which there are, are already, you know, uh, words that exist to describe those concepts uh, drawn from statistics from many, many years ago.